Hey, how's everybody doing? Happy Kwanzaa! Celebrate Kwanzaa. I am actually on time. I thought about this a minute ago. I'm like, uh, Taisha, you're gonna be on time. You're not gonna be on CP time and you're gonna do good. <laughs> so let me know if you can hear me okay. I am here in my living room. I got some noisy neighbors, but also got some music to kind of drown out all of that. So let me know how you are observing Kwanzaa. Today is the first day of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja, which means unity, which encouraged the title of this video here. Uh, you can hear me just fine. How are you doing? Some chick name star. <laughs> I love your name. So yeah, I just uh, set up my Kwanzaa uh, table today. Shout out to Positive Vibes store in Virginia Beach. They're the ones uh, that I, I, I ordered some Canaras from. I had this Canara uh, for a while. So I don't trust myself with the taper candle. <laughs> so I have some battery operated ones. So don't, you know, talk about a sister, you know, cause I light them and I forget that you see all the stuff I got going on over here. You know, I don't wanna see how good my insurance is. <laughs> so I'm using battery operated, but everything behind me are just some things that, you know, I collected over, uh, over the years. I do wanna give a shout out real quick, hold on to get my paper do want to give a shout, shout out real quick to the african museum casa del rey moro in san diego on 2471 congress street shout out to uh danae and melvin who took me there this year when i went down to san diego that's where i got my kwanzaa uh, poster from so I absolutely love it um i practice kwanzaa 365 and i've been doing that the best I can every opportunity, you know, for the, the past couple of years, in particular this last two years, you know, whenever I travel, I look for a black business. I want to eat black. I want to spend money. I want to hang out with family. You know, I want to do all that. So shout out to um, Casa Del Rey Moro and the elder there. He is, I think he said he was 76 years old and he is still doing tours, still sharing our history, still sharing his work. He is still teaching, you know, he's still teaching at the local university. He has a wealth of knowledge there. So every time I come into San Diego, I went there the first time when I graduated back in 2016. Uh, I found it on, on Google. I took my mother and my sister yeah <laughs> that is just a wonderful place to be so yeah uh here is the flyer i will leave his information in, in the comments he still passes this out to this day this here is um the more Tariq, i believe that's what that is yep and uh on the back of this he has his self with the omics head down in mexico so he's been everywhere he ties in our culture and shows our our footprint all around this world as we know and some of us seem to forget you know civilization started in africa started in, in ethiopia with the blackest of the black people so it makes no sense for you to not wake up look in the mirror the first thing you see is black and thank the creator for making making yourself that you know there's nothing but but love when we see our black selves in a mirror and there's nothing there should be nothing but love that we see when, when we see each other which is why kwanzaa humoja is so important so let me see who all is here so i can you know properly you know speak to you and say greetings we have b1 for life how are you doing uh king king james how are you doing miss you much layla lee kevin jordan george montgomery habari Ghani. what's the news yes <laughs> um thank you solo dolo thank you so much for the two dollar super chat i really appreciate that that means a lot heavy metal lifestyle oh i love you so much yes i'm going to talk about um to, uh, the second amendment soon so yes i'm so glad that you are here layla lee thank you for saying my name oh my gosh i mean we family here you my sister so why wouldn't I? <laughs> thank you for being here with me as we celebrate our first day of kwanzaa so getting right into this how did i start my day one of kwanzaa 
I started my day one of Kwanzaa today. Well, it actually started started last night. I have weird hours, and so I was just I wanted to be quiet yesterday. I did not want to go troll people and give them the real history on Kwanzaa. Shout out to Dr. Ishaka Musa Barashango. Shout out to him. So I didn't didn't want to go and troll and you know, bother people. So I kind of just stayed quiet. You know, I don't observe Kwanzaa. I don't subscribe to those holidays, especially, you know, since I talked you up on another video about, um, I'm sorry, I'm like jumping up and getting stuff. <laughs> you know, like I said, shout out to Dr. Barashango, African people and European holidays and mental genocide. This is book two, make sure you get book one as well. Um, I didn't, didn't want to troll people and bother them. You know, like I said, on my one video, I'm talking about black family rituals and African American holidays because it makes no, no sense for us to be in the age of information and we so-called proclaim to be free, but we still celebrate the ways as if we were enslaved. We have our own beautiful culture and we continue to drive ourselves crazy. It's a mental genocide as we continue to try to get into other people's cultures, you know? You look a damn fool on St. Patrick's Day wearing green, talking about, you know, kiss me, I'm Irish, and you blacker than me. You know, uh, I love the meme that's on, on social media. Um, the only St. Patrick we celebrate is James St. Patrick from Power. That is funny, but, you know, it has given me more honor and has made me more proud as a woman and more sane as I started just observing things and doing things that are of my culture. That's, that's just it. And shout out to my son, you know, he was in a book club in Hawaii. And, you know, not to, to, to start trolls to come bother me and arguments and stuff. But you know, he refused to read a book, because he's like, Okay, I'm reading about everybody else. But all you gave me to read is about Michelle Obama. Okay, and he re refused to read the book. And he ultimately decided that he did not want to participate in that, that book club anymore. And so the person who was in charge of it came to me on some butt hurt. And I'm like, I support my son. Okay, so shout out to my heart, my son. He's the one who took that stand and he inspired me. But uh, like I said, I started my day, uh, there was a post on Facebook that just came down the line. And it just showed me that I did not want unity with everybody and I don't. And I want to encourage you to, you know, you would drive yourself crazy trying, trying to seek unity with everybody because don't everybody want you. And, you know, it was... Um, this this article from the Huffington Post and I'm so mad at myself that I did not do a video earlier this year about the Huffington Post so I may do that pretty soon because I'm kicking myself like why didn't I do that and it's uh it had a picture of John Lewis with his with his fist I got my ass kicked in Selma <laughs> and when I see this shout out to Reed because he can do the voices perfectly I'm just like Wow, and the, the title, you know how people, ignorant people only read the headline and get all emotional. So when I saw that, I just bust out laughing. It's like, uh, your ancestors got beat for your right to vote or something. And I just bust out laughing. I, I, I did the laugh emoji and I'm like, and I com I commented, no, they didn't. You know, they, they it's their fault. They chose to get their ass kicked for that. You know, stop guilt tripping me into voting or participating in what you want me to do. And oh, did that open up all the butt hurt people to come and display their butt hurt? They tried to do petty attacks on me, talking about what was it? Somebody called me ugly, and somebody uh, tried to rub it in my face when they got their ass kicked so you could show off all your guns on your profile. I'm like, whatever. You know, I'm just like, wow, this is so <laughs> funny. So I'm just going back and forth. And, you know, and it also was good because I want to encourage you. I talked about this on another video. Those who are ignorant, they use their social media just as a diary. Y you remember coming up, you know, I'm a not a 90s child. So I remember that little electronic thing, you know, dear diary, you know, dear diary. They use social media as their dear diary, which is ultimately a time waster. But they so concerned over somebody, you know, getting in their business, the government watching them, Fed book. 
social media is meant for you as a business owner to advertise and to use as a platform to expand your reach. So I noticed everyone kept going to my profile and this was my personal side that I also have linked to all of the rest of my platforms. So I noticed people kept going to dig and find things about me. I'm like, this is beautiful. <laughs> and because I actually, you know, shout out to, you know, our black economic scholars and those of my, my family, my, my brothers and sisters who are about economic empowerment, you know, I was able to take that step this year and actually brand products and put a product out there to help better, you know, the world and things like that. So as a result of going back and forth with these butthurt minions, uh, I had to go to the post office and send off two large orders. I made some new friends on social media. If I got some new subscribers, hello, or Habari Ghani to you, you know, that's just beautiful. So I'm like, wow, this is absolutely excellent. And then ultimately, I ended up getting a, a temporary mute. They didn't ban me from the group. They deleted the post, but uh, I'm muted till tomorrow. And I'm like, I really don't care because it looks as though this group has served its purpose in getting me the exposure and the reach that ultimately I would have either had to pay Facebook ad or a sponsor Instagram post to get, but I got it. So thank you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I know a, a few people have saw have saw that saw that as well. It was like like so funny. Latifa Williams, uh, happy Kwanzaa to you, Habari Gandhi, my beautiful sister, King James. You're just great. I key guy, happy Kwanzaa. He said, I'm so tired of folks acting like it's, it's the end of the world if someone disagrees with them. It's okay to disagree. Exactly. And so that leads me to, you know, Umoja Unity. This year, I don't know if you noticed, but I took it as a point to not really go toe to toe with people who disagree with me. I pretty much have been making videos and connecting with brothers and sisters who are on the same accord with me because that's that's just where I want to be. You want your your brothers and sisters and your family to get better. And you know, at times when I did have to, you know, go against the grain with some some brothers and sisters, it was either them trying to make me better, which means that you cannot be exempt from from criticism. I'll put it this way, unless you are my equal or greater, you can't teach me or tell me anything. So if you're beneath me, and I believe it was, oh, who said this? Who said this? Ma, I'm getting a brain dump as a moment. Uh, he said, um, I don't argue with everyone. It's either I, I only teach, I, I got the quote all messed up. So those who are less than me, I teach all, I don't debate. I'm just all, all messed up. John Henry Clark, thank you, thank you. Um, I teach and, 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 and others I debate. I only debate with my equals, all others I teach. I think that's it, John Henry Clark, the ancestor. Thank you so much. See, see like I said, you know, steel sharpened steel. My brother was right here to, you know, help us out. So thank you. And yeah, I just came here to say that you don't, you don't, you should not look for umoja with everybody. It's not meant with everybody. And that's why I did not want to go and troll everybody's Christmas yesterday, which the Honorable Dr. Barashango, uh, Merry Christmas, a Merry Mess. You know, I just kind of, you know, I kept it business as usual. Had I not looked at, at a calendar, I would have looked outside. It would have looked just like any other day here in Seattle, gloomy, rainy, and cold. So, you know, <laughs> whatever. But this year, as I did Kwanzaa 365, you know, like I said, I woke up black every day. It didn't change. And it wasn't a secret. You know, as soon as I step out the door, even before you even see me, you see my name, Taisha, and know that I'm black. I'm just loving it and living in it. And I'm not ashamed of it. And I listened to something encouraging, something of Black empowerment every day. Shout out to the new Black media, okay? I will leave links for them. Those of us who, those of us who we share Umoja, Unity, you already know who I'm talking about, Tariq. This year, we, we got the final installment of, of Hidden Colors 5. We saw a lot, a lot of things come into fruition with um, Jason Black's race war. You know, we, we saw a lot of stuff and it's like, wow, 
once you leave that that fairy tale or that miseducation that we've all been exposed to and start re-educating yourself it was funny because before um i started the video the miseducation of lori lauren hill was on and we all have to acknowledge that we've been miseducated um when when I started really finding my, my right African mind was back in 2014. At the time, I was going to a Catholic university, but I was leaving Christianity. I was studying psychology while I'm buying textbooks that, you know, was by, uh, what's his name, Lombardo. And no, no disrespect to him because the Stanford Prison Experiment really uh reveal some things to me this year with some things that i went through this year which was like super excellent so i'm not cra crapping on him but while the university was was forcing me to read about him and skinner and freud and um young i'm at home studying dr amos wilson dr kunjufu the great dr francis crest wilson you know her um her passing day is is coming up, you know, where we have to honor her memory. But then at the same time, I'm taking, you know, um, American television where I'm right, I'm being forced to write papers on Andy Griffin and Charlie Chaplin, I believe, something like that. But however, I'm reading about James Baldwin and Paul Robeson and things like that. I'm like, really? That's when I started noticing the miseducation of Taisha. And the more that I, I became unified with those who are, who are or were or is gonna be on that same path, the more peace I found, the more I grew as a woman. The woman you see today, Taisha right here, December 26, 2019, is a result of those that I came in contact with back in 2014 and been in contact with. We just encourage each other to be better. We set an example, we lead by example. How many people did you see at the top of the year who said that they were going to lose weight, but they still fat? You know, how many people said that, that they was going to stop doing drugs, but they still strung out? How many people said that they were going to stop just being dusty and they caked in it? You know, but these brothers and sisters that I chose and who accepted me to, you know, practice Umoja with them, they've been doing this for years for decades and they still on the path it's no faking it for the funk doing it because it's popular or they have nothing else to do so it's it's really amazing it's really amazing and so um someone has has sent me an email and said that they were so happy you know that on my videos when i provide books or things for them to buy or add to their library and people do that too so if you have anything that i need to uh buy or add to my library please let me know happy kwanzaa to you brother christopher collimore um miss anti <laughs> I love that, Miss Anti People. Brother Reggie, how are you? Happy Kwanzaa. Um, a BB for Hodia. Yeah, I posted that earlier. Somebody had had, had uh, called here at the house. And I did not really know that today was a working day because I'm 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 off today. I took off for Kwanzaa because I wanted to travel, but it was just that I couldn't really, I don't know. Let's put it this way. I wanted to travel but i didn't really want to impose on anybody because my travel plans were last minute and also again i did not want to travel solo or go somewhere and just be wandering by myself you know because yeah i am kind of a i'm kind of forced to be introverted up here in washington but by nature i am extroverted in a mug you know we just came out of sagittarius season <laughs> And um, so yeah, just kind of like, you know, I took off. So I'm just thinking that, you know, I'll get some some stuff done. Um, I have a couple of projects going on. I'm still promoting my Timonics personal protection uh, gear. Make sure you check out TaishaEssex.com. Thank you to everybody who has supported, you know, TaishaEssex.com and my, my personal defense items. You know, we stated there was a problem. We are, you know, defenseless. We're vulnerable. So, you know, I took that as 
as my opportunity to, to, to not, you know, vent and, and agitate and woe is us, somebody needs to come save us. I went ahead and invested, you know, into these products to help keep us safe, to empower us, to take our, our personal defense, to pretty much practice Ujama, which is going to come up in a couple of days. Um, collective economics while also supporting others and to just you know it's pride you know to keep our money in our businesses to empower someone else whenever i get a notification that you know either i have a super chat thank you so much or a new order that has come through that's empowering because like the type, type of person i am i can cheer on everybody else you know if you say hey i just did this or i have this I'm cheering you all all the way. But then when it comes to me, I'm working on getting out of this. You know, I'm so timid, you know, about self-promotion. But having a business, having a platform, it's like, okay, you have to do your self-promotion or you're going to pay somebody to do it. <laughs> so I'm getting, I'm working on just self-promotion, putting myself out there, putting my brand out there. And you'll see a lot, lot more of that as I start to get comfortable in my own skin because we've been so, trained for so long to, you know, be the mascot for everybody else. Even going to work, you are the mascot. You wear their uniform. You, you represent your job's brand. Well, now it's like, okay, I am my own brand. And then I have to represent that and put that out there and, you know, sell my, my products. So, yeah. So we have Leisha. How are you, sister? And you are so pretty and you are too. Like, you know, I'm I'm only, you know, as good as my my family. So thank you for the compliments. And I love you so much. You're beautiful too. And my confidence has went a long way. Excuse me. Um just that that Umoja and Kwanzaa is celebrating us. We've been, you know, the underdogs. And anytime you hear something black is bad you know black magic or your black ass you know it's always in a negative fashion and for the the last couple of years and you know especially this this year here you know everything black has been so beautiful when i was driving across country i could not have drove across country without having satellite radio you know i had to scan through the channels but um I have a video <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll post that where uh, it was certain points of time if if uh, I had my road camera turned around because I, I, I was either bored because driving 40 plus hours across country, you know, you gonna get bored, you gonna talk to yourself, you gonna go through some stuff. So yeah, I, I talked to myself, but uh, when I would turn my camera to kind of document my silliness, uh james brown i'm black and i'm proud came out that is my mother flipping song oh my gosh so i made it a point whenever i was switching stations and that song came on i sang it at the top of my lungs like it's certain parts of the song where i would just start coughing because i'm singing say it loud i'm black and i'm proud so loud <laughs> and i know people around me was laughing at me because my car is a fishbowl i don't have tinted windows i'm like i'm not gonna tint my windows because the people break the jokers out and muffles the sound and if i hear you break into my car i'm gonna go out there and defend my property but um yeah, I sang it as loud as I could. But then there's this other song. And speaking of, of Kwanzaa and just celebrating Black, um, this song, I don't know anything about this song until this year, it's, uh, turning through satellite radio. And it was the Isley Brothers Fight the Power. Drop me a comment or give me a thumbs up if you heard that song. Oh my gosh, it's it's an oldie, but it's a it's for damn show a goodie. So I'm in the car, and I'm like, okay, first of all, the Ozzy Brothers, you know, they're from my area in in Ohio, and my mom, you know, my parents, they they played the Ozzy Brothers. My dad pl played the guitar, so yeah. But when I see the title, Fight the Power, I'm like, okay. But when I hear the lyrics, 
Man, oh man, let me tell you. Every time that song came on, I really did, did not know the lyrics. I'm driving and can't pull up the lyrics, but shoot, let me tell you, that's another empowering song. So if you're ever in a mood where you, you don't feel good, you're going through something, you know, turn that song on, turn on something by Isaac Hayes, the Ozzy Brothers, James Brown. Uh, Cause I tell you, the payback, <laughs> James Brown, the payback will get you right. It will get your spirit right. So um, going to this here, I mentioned this book earlier this year in another another video idea. So, so as I'm saying, you know, you want to feed yourself your culture, feed yourself something black every day. And that will, you know, change what the miseducation system, what society puts in you to not like about yourself, to not like about your people. And it really, you know, pulls your your heartstrings, you know, to have pride and to be proud of who you are, where you came from and where you are going. It, it, it gets you to invest, you know, invest into your people and where you are going and you have a, a, a sense of pride. So uh, this book here, The Black Chronicles, I bought this uh, last year in, in uh, Seattle at the Northwest African American History Museum. And I talked, and what this is, is different newspaper clippings that are compiled about black people from slavery until uh, I think it went up to like the 1970s. So, um, with with us, you know, it is like we have a disdain or we're ashamed to honor our history in this country. You know, it's not our fault that we started out here enslaved, but we didn't start here as enslaved. We were trading here. You know, a lot of us are what are are native to this land. A lot of us, un unfortunately, were stolen and brought here. But nonetheless, we're still black. We are native blacks of North America. And that is our, our common denominator. So um, I found this this article here. And if you happen to get this, have a copy of this, let me know. I'm going to the Northwest African American Museum, uh, I think, probably Sunday. But um, I will pick up, if they have some more of these, I will buy it out. And I will let you know that I have them and you can, you know, purchase them th through me. And they are $20. So yeah, if they're over there, I'm going to scoop them all up. And um, there's one article in here on page, well, in here is listed as page four. Let's see if it's like a subsection. No, I think all of them are listed as page two, three, four. It starts over two, three, four. Starts starts over. But um, it talks about Paul Robeson, and I spoke on him earlier. I have his uh, hardback book over there. You can find his hardback book at thrift stores because that's how I got my hands on it. I got my hands on it for three dollars. You can find Paul Robeson at thrift stores. You can find um. Henrietta Lacks at, at Black Thrift, I mean, at thrift stores, you, you can find her book all the time. And um, there's a few other books that are common at thrift stores. So I encur encourage you when you go to a thrift store or a yard sale or something, if you see any book that is Black, especially a book that's Black by our scholars, go ahead and scoop that, that, that bad boy up, okay? But, um, this one is titled Paul Robeson to be African. And this is quoted from him in New York on July 10th, 1936. It says, um, it jumps down here. As a stage, as a stage of film actor, Mr. Robeson has played leading roles in Othello, Emperor Jones, and Porgy and Bess. He's quoted. In my music, my plays, my films, I want to always carry this central idea to be African. To accomplish this, Mr. Robeson believes that Black people in America must learn of Africa's rich history and culture. Quote, the recognition of their common origins, he says, quote, will bind Negro to Negro. 
When the younger generation of Negroes look at Africa today, they see only the savagery, devil worship, voodoo, squalor, and darkness taught in the American schools, but they are looking at the broken remnants of what was in its day a mighty thing. Mr. Robeson stresses the American Negroes' great heritage. The Negroes have grown up with the country becoming part of the soil itself. In black music, the spirituals in particular, he sees the soul of a race made manifest. So that's what I want to, you know, stress and, and emphasize today. And the Black Chronicles, uh, I mean, uh, it is by Mr. Wilson. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, it is by Malloyd Ben Wilson Jr. Give honor and credit to the author. Um, he has a video on, on YouTube if you, you want to uh, check him out and I'll post that in the description once I, I get done with this. But let, let me know what you think about, you know, hearing that and how, you know, how do you celebrate being black, especially in a society going into 2020 where it's kind of ta taboo. You know, where I would even admit it was a certain point in time where I was ashamed to have a, a urban name, you know, of being Taisha. I wanted to change it so they won't know I'm black until I got there. I'm like, sure, you gonna know I'm black even before I get there. You you gonna feel my vibes. And I know the power that I possess as a black woman, you know, it's a beautiful thing, it's an honorable thing. I've had the opportunity to connect with some honorable honorable sisters who have nothing but love for our brothers what 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 we create our black children and that's that's just it and our our unity you know i work with you know someone who is who is my color who don't even speak to me we ain't saying not even one word to each other <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. Um, I, I pass people, you know, in public. And because it's so rare to see us in this area, I'm like, hey, brother, how you doing? They damn near jump out they skin. <laughs> it is so funny. It is so hilarious. Um, I thought I was going to go up, up, up to Costco a, a little while ago. And you know how I'm, I'm put together right now, I'm going out the house, you know, I commonly wear a head wrap. I'm commonly, you know, doing whatever. And it is like, like how, how Tupac said, all eyes on me. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? You know? <laughs> it is so cool because I'm, I'm so proud of who I am and what I'm doing. And it's so inspiring. You know, I did not come come up with this. You know, my mentors who I look up to, Sister uh, Sharzad Ali, or Kathy, you better go subscribe to her channel, Sister Danae Wright, we have Dee Tubman, um, Dr. Francis Cress Wells saying, like I said, I did a paper on her. I was like, I remember I was debating her against um bj skinner in school and the instructor was so mad at my assignment that he actually you know gave me a zero and said you need to do this again and if you don't have it again by this day you know i'll i'll, I'll give you an f i'm like this some bulls so i had to do a paper up real quick all like bj skinner he has this and the skinner box was so phenomenal in operant conditioning therapy and blah 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 just to pass the class but you know that's why i kind of really don't have a desire to go go back to college i i really don't you know because the way and i'll tell you this right now the way to use college this is the way to, to use college and i don't want to touch on this topic until i'm going to collaborate with a great brother and sister tomorrow uh, I will make an uh, announcement for that later. I'm not going to talk about this until tomorrow, but the only way to really use your degree, it really doesn't matter. Your degree d doesn't matter. It, it really don't. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on it tomorrow, but I'm just saying for some people it works. But in my case, the only way it would have worked is if I had uh, went into an internship within two years of graduating, then got my name and my face in the corporation or whatever, and then parlayed that into a permanent position. That's the only way to really make it work, to be honest. So, yeah. 
Um, we got to some comments. We have, let's see. Again, thank you so much for the compliments, my beautiful sister Layla Lee, Leisha Leash, my beautiful sisters, my handsome brother DJ King James Hunter. The smile melts me away. <laughs> thank you. I try to take care of it, man. That's why I think I'm nosing too. Like when you love yourself, like like legit love yourself on the inside, it really projects on the outside. This 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 year was the first full year, probably my entire adulthood that I did not wear a wig. Um, I did not, I do not own a come get me dress for the club. I, you know, stuff like that. And I, and I actually attracted brothers to me. I mean, for real, just being naturally Taisha. And, you know, I don't want to say a bad word, but if these it's this term called pick me or something like that. Yeah. So I'll talk about that on another video too. Cause that was a thing too. That was kind of getting on my nerves, but when you're naturally operating in your element, things just happen. You know, I had some, I'll call them females who wasn't secure in themselves, who were just intimidated and did everything in their power to try to destroy me, spread bad rumors. And I'm like, wow, you you really start seeing just your your natural power, your natural influence. And it's just beautiful. I want to turn my camera a little bit because this picture right here, I love it. It's the black man, woman, and child, the only holy trinity that I identify with and that I recognize. So I couldn't cut cut him off. I had to kind of turn my camera to, to honor him in that during that Kwanzaa. But um yeah just operating in your natural element just being natu naturally you and that's probably something that i would have never found on my own you know like i said it takes great sisters and brothers who see something valuable in you and they invest and they you know dig you up out of that place of being a brain dead zombie which is just just beautiful so i smile more i found the right lipsticks to wear i take care of my skin you know uh deep condition my afro my hair has been growing like i don't know what but i did something really stupid when i had my uh, uh twist in i had a tangle and i pulled it out and oh my gosh like yeah i damaged some of my hair where it's like shorter i'm like no i'm like really hurt and sad so i'm doing everything in my power to get everything healthy you know biotin plenty of water exercise all that good stuff so i'm like why did i do this i love my hair like i actually cried i'm so freaking sad <laughs> um you said, you took the words out of my mouth, say a lot, I'm black and I'm proud. And that is me. I've never wanted to be anything else. This is coming from Cook51. Thank you so much for coming through. Happy Kwanzaa. And yes, it's like, wow, once you start like separating yourself from the matrix, you know, because everything there is to make you feel like you have a void and a need, which is why Christmas is there you have to show that you love and the children are not complete because they don't have presents under the tree and it's like you have everything you need you have everything and you are enough we are enough and we have this family we don't have to go and seek outside things to feel complete you know um so once you realize you are enough that's when you start regaining your power. You're not searching anymore. Um, I would have to say, although I live here by myself in Washington, you know, my best friend just went to California, but I'm like, okay, it's a little difficult because, you know, I don't have that familiar person to connect with physically, but I'm like, I have enough. I have the reach of social media. I have technology, you know, but I'm okay in my own company. I was talking to someone who shall remain nameless the other day and they're just like, when when New Year's come, I'm going to the casino because I'm not going to be in my house by myself and I'm all alone. And I'm like, well, you do know there's a lot of dangers and you want to go to the casino, you know, just, just stay home and reflect and be cool. I can't do like you. I need people and I need this. And I'm like... The crowd you're looking for the casino well at least i ain't going to the club and going to go hang out i'm like the casino kind of is a club you know 
But I'm like, whatever. Okay, do you boo? <laughs> and just moved right, right, right on with it. Um, Leisha says, please let me know. I want one. I definitely will. I will make that announcement here. Um, email me at taisha.essex at gmail or go to taishaessex.com on that first page. There's a form at the bottom. Put your information there and then um, I'll, I'll let you know. Like I, I won't even advertise it up front. Or I, I was watching The Breakfast Club with Ryan Leslie and he's like, yeah, I give out my cell phone number, you know, so that, you know, my fans, but you, you got, I won't say you guys, my family is here on YouTube. So if you want to take down my phone number, area code 360-215-1399. Again, 360-215-1399. And you can text me. So Leisha, text me there, okay? And I will let you know as soon as I get over there that if they have it or not. 360-215-1399. I am a loud singer too. My family loves singing. I can make my voice loud or quiet. I just choose to be loud. Keep on singing. I like, I wish I had a great singing voice. I sing my best in the shower or in the car by myself, which is why I had to drive across country by myself and get my singing on, you know? <laughs> Good evening from Pine Tops, North Carolina. Daryl, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's so, so good to see you. I love North Carolina. I would say some of the finest gentlemen come from North Carolina. So thank you so much. Happy Kwanzaa. Kimberly, that's my best friend I was telling y'all about. Oh my gosh. Kimberly, let me let, tell y'all this. Unity, okay? Um, Kimberly and I met back in 2003 it was her second ship it was my first on the uss ronald reagan and she worked in the library she is uh, a chief petty officer in the navy i love her so much she was on a video i did um meet my best friend when i first got here and i took you to the uss nimitz home, uh, homecoming she's been who kept me saying all this time from hawaii until here you know i love her with all of my heart her family has welcomed me with with open arms so yeah i i i, I always joke with her because i'm like my first daughter i'm gonna have to name her her kimberly you know <laughs> just as a way to say thank you to her and all she did so yeah i give kimberly some love happy kwanzaa hug my nephews for me alicia moss much love happy kwanzaa filmmaker jay oh i love your name let me know uh what project you have going on like i said I, ce I celebrate others gorgeous trinity portrait yes right there that that is the holy trinity the black man woman and child hotep jumbo happy kwanzaa um assalamu alaikum <laughs> all that good stuff to us yes we are just a great people so uh before i forget um, I'm going to leave you with a few other books before that. Um, speaking of Kwanzaa, if you're looking for something to do tonight, and I'm not going to keep you on here all night because I want you to get back to your Kwanzaa. We got, you know, we have six more days and I got six more battery operated candles. <laughs> but um, yes, if you're looking for some good movies to watch tonight that are free on YouTube, um, somebody, if you can, uh, type, type in Panther 1995. Calling me and I gotta talk to you later. Um, type in um, Panther 1995. That is about the Black Panther Party of Self Defense uh, out of California. It has a phenomenal cast. You have um, Bobby Brown. You have the brother who played. Oh, I've got his name in the Matrix, but he plays uh, Huey P. Newton. He also was in the Matrix. You also got um. Who else is in this movie? You have Bokeem Woodbine. Um, who else? Court, I think it's Courtney B. Vance. He's in it. Bobby Brown. Um, AJ Johnson, you know, who played Ezel in, in, in Friday. He's in it. But this is a great movie because it tells you about the... the the creation of the Black Panther Party of Self-Defense in Oakland, California. He also has uh, the Honorable Baba Dick Gregory in it. Uh, no, that uh, Morpheus is um, Lawrence, Fish Lawrence Fishburne, but he's the other guy. I just watched Matrix. I'm gonna do another video on watching the Matrix now and you know finding what I didn't see the first time I watched it. I'll do that upcoming as well. 
Um, but yeah, great, great movie. Uh, that's Panther 1995. Also, um, another movie that you can check out is um, Harambe 1996. That movie was on, um, on, on PBS. I watched that when I was 12. Yes, I was 12 when it came out. And that is a movie that, you know, starts off, you know, with, with Christmas, but it shows how we can observe Christmas, but also, you know, um, roll that right into Kwanzaa that that movie is it's a really good foundation because I watch that every year you know till t today that's how Kwanzaa has been a staple in my life and a cultural practice another good movie on um YouTube that you can watch tonight is um the spook that sat by the door that's also for free on YouTube another good one is um let me think I just watched this the other day. If you type in Mario, no, type in Melvin Van Peebles and the Black Cowboy. Oh my gosh, if you like hidden colors, you're gonna love this film. Elder Van Peebles, he talks about how black people are the original cowboy. And I know that we touched on that with, I believe was Hidden Colors 3, I believe. Hidden Colors 3 when we talked about Bass Reeves. But that documentary right there really made so much sense and actually gave me a little bit more encouragement living here on the West Coast in the Pacific Northwest. I drove across country. I saw the places on the map that all we knew was just the map. You know, I drove, I, I've seen these places. Also, if you have any suggestions on how I can put all of this footage I have about driving across country together creatively, or if you have any questions about doing a road trip, send them to me so I can figure out a way to link all this footage together to tell a creative story. Um, if you have any other movies, let me know as well. Ruby D, thank you so much for the super chat. I love you so much up in Baltimore. Happy Kwanzaa um, Harambe to you. Thank you. Um, my Mark 1000, my brother took me to see that opening night. Dope ass soundtrack. Yes, I have the CD here. I played that when I was going up to Canada last year. I watched The Matrix at least once a month, especially the Animatrix. He's people are sleep. The people are sleeping on the 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 animatrix. Yes, great movie, Posse. Oh my. Okay, that's what I'm doing when I get off of here. Okay, I'm gonna finish washing these dishes and I'm gonna sit down and watch Posse. Thank you so much. Um, they're making a Bass Reeves movie. Hopefully, uh, it's the right people making it, and we ain't getting no Harriet Tubman crap like they 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 that they, they they just did. Speaking of Harriet Tubman, let me tell you about Mary Fields. Speaking of living up here in the Pacific Northwest in Unity, we know about Harriet Tubman and how you know mainstream media just tried to sully her reputation. Well, let me tell you about Mary Fields. She's otherwise known as Black Mary. She lived up here uh, in the area of Helena, Montana. She also carried a shotgun. Let me tell you about this sister here. She was about six feet tall, about 200 pounds, carried a shotgun and worked as the first Black woman U.S. postal worker. Now, it is said that um, one time she was driving her wagon and she was fixing to be attacked by a pack of wolves. This sister, Black Mary, was so bad, so bad, she fought off a pack of wolves. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. And this is crazy because I absolutely avoided driving through Montana on my road trip because I asked a lot of questions before I drove, like, hey, which state should I avoid? Which route should I take? People told me to avoid Montana because th the time that I left, it was snowing up in the mountains and I drive a hybrid. So I don't have a four, four wheel drive. But then also, too, they told me to, you know, driving, driving, driving by yourself, you know, don't stop and get gas on the, on the, the reservations and stuff like that. And I, you know, crapping on anybody but understand these are the safety tips i had while i was driving i wish somebody told me to say the hell up out of uh wyoming and i'll do a video on that on that soon i already got one called the shittiest hotel ever on my channel go check that out but i got another one coming but yes mary fields 
what and this is on um the melvin van people's documentary on black cowboys and then she would would bet a silver dollar that she could knock out any white man with a with one punch and she never lost and that just empowered me because although she knocked them out with just one punch you know there's a lot of battles that i have to face although for the time being they haven't been physical but i've had to go toe to toe you know with you know admin the legal side you know and just morals you know and that just just gave me the power it just empowered me so when you wake up black and you stay black empowered you can you can for real conquer the world you can you know fight your way out of some bull when we've been taught to pray away the bull and be on our knees no you actually stand up and you stand on your square and you fight it you know um one book that i want to recommend is know thyself by naeem akbar last year for kwanzaa i got black man know thyself for my son so yeah i've i've read this book i touch on it you know every now and then especially when i need to pick me up his lectures are also on youtube as well you can go and play play those as you're getting ready in the a.m and it just gives you that mm, you know to really get through it um another one is cultural genocide in the black and american uh i'm sorry in the black and african studies curriculum as i was saying you know we have to acknowledge that we've been miseducated that we've been purposely miseducated and i wish that my awakening happened sooner in life but you know better now than than never i can imagine still walk walking around here with a screen door wig on and you know proclaiming to be a woman of god and married to jesus you know and anything black that's that devil stuff <laughs> so yeah uh shout out to the honorable dr ben you know um just amazing work i have not finished this cover to cover you know i go to certain points and get what I need. Shout out to Brother Righteous who told me, you know, you'll have a book. You may not go through it cover to cover, but as long as you have it as a reference to go find what you're looking for to confirm something that you are feeling or researching. So cultural genocide in the Black and African Studies curriculum. This came in handy, you know, when I was pointing out some inconsistencies and some blatant just misinformation and and my son's, you know, studies in, um, in school. Um, real quick, wanna give uh, honor to this piece of art that I have. Um, I need to frame it. But yeah, I bought this at the Sankofa Cafe and Bookstore in Washington, DC, across the street from Howard, U Howard University. The hands of the great, um, film director producer writer you know um mr jerima he touched this he autographed my other sankofa poster but this is just a beautiful um portrait of the San sankofa display in L louisville kentucky hometown of the great muhammad ali which i had the privilege of being there this year on my road trip i have that video here on youtube um that is about it as we we go into you know unity just the more you research the more you find out the more you appreciate about yourself you appreciate your history or our past that's when you become more invested more invested in improving the quality of life um securing the future and progressing our culture this is what other cultures talk about behind closed doors you know they create stuff like why why do you think that certain things is is or certain things put out are not in english you have to translate it or you know it's passed through word of mouth or it's behind closed doors or you go to certain stores it's behind the counter unless you know the the, the proper passcode to get it okay so we have to hold things on um hold things sacred and maintain the honor about our our beautiful culture as people um let's see what we have in the comments 
He said, I watch Shaka Zulu every Kwanzaa and Black History Month. That's another great one. Thank you so much. Eddie Longo, <laughs> how are you doing? Happy Kwanzaa to you. She was tough. I said the exact same thing. I wish I was woke earlier. And he said, um, health and wealth coach Danita Williams. Oh, I love that. Uh, let me know what other product, projects you have going on and if we can, you know, uh, collaborate to get our, our messages out there and and spread this good news to our subscribers. I'm totally here for that. So if you if you also have a platform or have any ideas to where you know we, we can you know um, spotlight each other for Kwanzaa or Kwanzaa 365. Um, I'm always traveling. I know a lot of us are also traveling as well. It'll be great to connect in person and talk, you know, offline and just really build. This is what it's all about is using social media smartly. I talk about, about this all the time. You know, I don't want 5,000 friends on Facebook where I have to argue with every day. I want family where I can celebrate. If you have an issue, I'm here to encourage you. If I can do anything to help you, you know, or vice, vice versa, because I'm not immune from anything. Let me tell you, there's some battles that I'm still fighting on a daily, <laughs> on a daily. It's just, you know, I've gotten to a point where I have such strong examples that I look up to like, okay, really, what would Mary Fields do? What would Huey Newton do? What would, you know, um, Ida B. Wells do? And I really just sit and think about it and formulate a plan because it's so important to guard our emotions. We're not going to let people play on our emotions and toy us around and make us go fight their battles. You know, it was a person uh, the, the, the other day they were telling me like, well, you should have did this in that situation. You should have should have done this. And I just asked them in return, like, hey, your wife doesn't work, right? She's at home with your children. So would you give her this advice to go and do this? But don't fucking tell me. Oh, I said fucking, I'm sorry. But don't tell me to do it. So that's, you know, not letting people play on your emotions and get you to go fight their battles while they sit back and laugh and protect their livelihood, knowing good and god darn well they won't put their wife or daughters in that situation, nor sit back and watch their wife and daughters deal with the bullshit that you're going through. So, yeah, one last thing I have here is um, the Black Holocaust. And usually the start of others and their celebrations and their you know observance and day of mourning and stuff like that it starts with talking about what they had to overcome and their holocaust well i'll go ahead and put it on youtube um december 26 2019 black people have been through the worst holocaust that this entire planet has ever seen and it's about time that we stop being ashamed of it because we didn't cause it. We didn't do anything. We're victims. We were victims. Our ancestors were victims. However, for us to still be here going into 2020, we had to be a resilient people. We had to be a great people, strong people, and the people who did all kinds of other good stuff. We fought back. We didn't stay docile. When they, okay, I'm about to hit on, on, on this. When I battle people about the Bible and stupid stuff like, like that, they're like, oh, the Bible is the only book, it's the only book. I'm like, the Bible, if you want to really get, get really get down to it, we weren't allowed to read the Bible. Although it was taking concepts from our culture, taking, you know, shout out Osiris, shout out, you know, and put into this book, but it was put in different characters to elevate another culture which is why none of us walked on those boats named paul and you know yvette and anthony and you know stuff like that it was stolen concepts that were black that were whitewashed to empower someone else so when we got our hands on the bible it wasn't that oh we wasn't 
Um, the Bible was it the only way. The Bible was a stepping stone. The Bible was like hooked off phonics, okay? We weren't, you know, the English language or Latin or whatever was not native to us. So we used that to learn how to read and to learn the cadence of words and learn certain things. So once you got done getting a hooked on phonics education from the Bible, you move on to other stuff. There's a plethora libraries of books that if you stay blind and the Bible is the only book, the only thing that I need, well, shit, you might as well stay on the plantation. And that's kind of where you are on the plantation. So this book here, The Black Holocaust, when you open it up and read what has been compiled about your people and your plight, and it, it, it will instill in you a sense of passion, a passion to move your people forward, a passion to, you know, fight off adversity. You know, since I've started just being black, black first, black everything, and you know, Kwanzaa 365, even here where I'm at, you know, I wish I was in a place like at Atlanta or DC or Detroit because up here, like I said, it's far few in between when I see someone is like me and very far, almost impossible to find somebody that talks like me. So for me to stay so steadfast and, and who I am, this is me. I've been called bad names like, oh, you're a racist. And I just, I held back like, how the fuck can I be a racist? And I dropped that knowledge. And I'm like, do you want to go toe to toe with me for real? We, we can really do this. And it helps you become articulate. You become passionate and you just become how I like to say, unfuck withable. Okay. Don't fuck with me. And that's when it comes to unity you don't want to unify with people who don't like you okay and that's what pisses a lot of people off i'm here by myself because i love myself i get along with myself i didn't hear abusing myself shooting up you see my teeth is good i ain't smoking meth because i don't like myself i'm here chilling but i'm not forcing myself to unite with people who don't want to be bothered with me i'm not trying to unite with people who don't fucking like me i'm not going to unite with people who want to stick a knife in my back i'm just not going to do that okay and once you get you unite with yourself okay you won't stand for anybody else disrespecting you nor disrespecting your culture and i'll talk about that tomorrow on another video so um when um I started this video talking about when uh, I was in that, that group this morning, they were going in about, oh, you know, they marched on Selma for you to have the right to vote and got their ass kicked and got lynched for you to have the right to vote. I referenced this book before. I had to buy this on Amazon because they had a copy at the National, the Northwest African American Museum. They would not sell to me. So you can find this on Amazon or um. You can go to uh, another site called Alibris. L, I'm sorry, A L I B R I S. Scoop this book up because it also too when a lot of us start talking about a certain book, people jack the price up. But or you can also um, holler at br Brother Brett at Positive Vibes. He may also have a copy. But um, on page 85, and I talked about this before when the whole <laughs> how Dave Chappelle said it. Uh, Jesse Smoulier, you know, try to play with our emotions, you know, shout out to him, you know, being a uh, in-law relative of um, Kamala Harris, try to get us in our emotions and our feelings about why he was attempted, uh, um, uh, uh, lynched or the attempted lynching. When you know your history, and you start reading and you can put two and two together and you know the truth you won't be bamboozled by people who try to play with your emotions so here on page 85 um where are we at i'll talk i'll start right here this is quote men lynch most readily a southern critic critic observed when the black victim has offended that intangible something called racial superiority, that offense, in fact, with no suggestion of sexual impropriety, <laughs> yeah, I can't pronounce that word, impropriety, precipitated scores of brutal lynchings. I'll read that again. 
and the that offense in which no suggestion of sexual impropriety precipitated scores of brutal lynchings quote when a n-word gets ideas a federal official in wilkinson county mississippi declared the best thing to do is to get him in the ground as quick as possible and um all too often black southerners innocent of any crime or offense were victims of lynchings or burnings because they were black and in the wrong place at the wrong time this came from lit whack 1998 page 307 so as i drove across this country i drove through started in the racist state of washington tip down to oregon tip down to idaho went across wyoming went across nebraska hit the birthplace of the honorable malcolm x shimmy the border of iowa down to arkansas was in tennessee for a hot minute drove through mississippi during the evening time until i stopped for the weekend in birmingham alabama home of the 16th street bombing where four black juvenile girls were bombed at church so when people come and play on your emotions about oh for the right to vote oh for their sexuality oh for this just know that the most horrific heinous illegal crimes against you were and your ancestors were and are and will be because you're black and until we unite and see that black is the common thing that we share, the common thing that is beautiful, and the common thing that empowers us. And it's the common reason why we are still here. We will not, you know, progress. And that's what gives us our, our umoja, our unity. So I hope you enjoyed this live video here tonight on day one of Kwanzaa. I will make it my mission to be here each night. I will see you tomorrow for day two. And we will just continue building. And really, I hope to encourage you to be, be proud of yourself, love yourself. Because when, when you do, you will spread that love around you. And to end on something else real quick, because y'all know I ain't made a video about going in on a church in a while in Christianity. But since y'all yeah, brought it up, you know, when it says love thy neighbor. I, I mean, like I said, Umoja, we don't want unity with everybody. There's people who don't like us, who don't give a shit about us, who commit crimes against us. You know, um, I won't put this person's information out there, whatever, but her next door neighbor broke into her house. And so as a result, as the universe would have it, he tried to break into somebody else's house and the homeowner killed his ass. So, you know, I, I can't love a neighbor that does stuff like this. So... <laughs> i'll go to the comments and just let me know you know what you're doing for kwanzaa um some other stuff and what you thought about tonight if not i will see you on the next video i thank you to everybody who you know uh support me who subscribe who give me time your valuable time you would never get back so i hope that i'm bringing you value on this channel thank you to everyone who has shared um my platform shared a message i put out there introduced me to somebody else who have shopped my Timonic store and bought some products on, um, on my website. Um, I have a discount code GIFT35 that's valid until the end of, end of the year. You can save 35% on everything. I'm thinking about also including in there um, maybe free shipping as well. So I'll update you when I do that. But thank you so much. Everything I mentioned, I'll put it in the description. If you have a suggestion, a book or something, put it in the description as well. And... Um, Emoja, good night to health and wealth coach uh, Danita Williams. What's the common response for Kwanzaa? I have this book here, uh, The Seven Days of Kwanzaa. The call is Habarigani, which means, or I will call out, or whoever call out Habarigani, what's the news? And we will um, respond with that day's uh, principle. Tonight it is Umoja, which I started with lighting the black candle. Well, not really lighting, I just turned the battery on <laughs> in my black candle. The candles on Kwanzaa, um, this black candle in the middle, the reason why there is one, um, 
shout out to Dr. Karanga, who is the creator of, of Kwanzaa as well. Um, the black candle is for us black people. And that's why there is one, because we are one. We're not many, we are one, the black people. Um, the red is for our blood that, 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 that we've shed, for our land, for, you know, just us as a people in our blood, our sacrifices. You know, when you think of sacrifice, you think of, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. And then the green is for our, our land. Um, our, our, our mother continent, Africa, we cannot let anyone take that from us. You know, that's where all life began, whether you like it or not, whether you look like me or not, all life began in Africa. And in the beginning, there was darkness. <laughs> so thank you so much for getting me to instill that. I also have other Kwanzaa videos on this channel. Um, I have one that I did back uh, in 2018, which talked about pretty much everything in Kwanzaa and my first Kwanzaa. Then last year, I have a series of seven videos. I think it's seven. I think we did something every day. If it's not seven, it's six. When uh, my son and I, we, you know, I really was trying to drive home and drive hard each principle of Kwanzaa. You can check that out. That's here. Um, shout out to everybody who shared that video on Facebook. I saw you. I appreciate you. It's titled, We're Not Celebrating Christmas, Day One of Kwanzaa. So I have each day that you can check that out as well. Tag me if you have videos on Kwanzaa. Tag me on social media with your Kwanzaa celebration. I made it a point. Whoever shares something Kwanzaa today on Facebook, I shared you to my story. So yeah, I'm not going to um, ramble on any longer. I just want to say thank you, Habari Ghani, um, Abibi Fahodie to everybody. I love you so much. I thank you and you are my family. I'm your sister. So in what, whatever way I can be here for you, let me know. I gave out my phone number, 360-215-1399. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, shout out to Buffalo, New York. Everybody up there, I love you so much. Ashe, Bibi Fahodie, um, good night, happy Kwanzaa, and all types of good stuff. And I will see you on the next video.